Okay, so we have here the isolation and identification of our mycobacteria in your biological specimen. So also, uh, we have also here some of the consideration for the processing and uh, preparation of our specimen for identification of your mycobacteria. First one, we have here the lab safety consideration. So when you are handling specimen for the mycobacteria identification, you need to be uh, highly cautious with that one. So you try to process your specimen for your smear preparation for culture under your biological safety level 2. And for the propagation, it should be biological safety, biosafety level 3. Okay, and for those uh, when you are generating aerosol here for possible na airborne transmission, then it should be processed under biological safety, cabinet level 2 and level 3. Specimen collection. So your sample for that, you could have here the sputum. Sputum is by... Uh, expectorated, deep expectorated cuff, okay, approximately 5 to 10 ml. It should be collected early in the morning, so as soon as the patient arrives from sleep, and you need to collect here or submit a specimen for three consecutive days. So that one should be two out of three, dapat. Two positive out of three. Another one, you could also have, uh, uh, instead of the expectorated cuff, then you could also perform here your tracheal aspiration or even your bulb bronchoalveolar lavage, or even your bronchoscopy, where you try to give here isotonic solution to collect the specimen, or it could also be... But when you're doing your bronchoscopy, you're giving liquidine to the patient. The problem with this procedure here is that when you are giving isotonic solution or liquidine to the patient, it might dilute your sample or it might kill your uh, bacteria with your specimen. It might result here to your false negative na result. Another one, we have here the gastric washing or your gastric aspirin. So this is necessary here, ideal for this patient could not able to have an expectorated calf sputum uh, specimen for ambulatory patient for children. So this one provides you a specimen, a gastric uh, secretion of the patient. And that provides your sputum that has been swallowed by the patient overnight. All you need to do is just give the patient here with your <coughs> sterile water, orally or nasogastric tube aspiration. Okay, para mag-collect ng specimen gastric juice that will provide with the specimen in the upper respiratory tract because naswalo niya ang sputum. So 30 to 60 ml has been given na distilled water para magiging, ano siya, magiging specimen mo that would contain the sputum of the patient. Okay, so still, you need also to collect that one for three consecutive days. Urine sample could also be your sample for identification, especially if this one is already a disseminated or extrapulmonary infection. So, miliary disseminated tuberculosis. Okay, for the urine, so 15 ml would be the minimum na uh, specimen volume natin. And I uh, collect that one in the first morning na urine specimen, or even could also collect the specimen from the and dwelling catheter with a sterile na needle in order for that to prevent contamination with other organisms. So sample could also be your specimen for identification of the bacteria, especially for your MAC or your Mycobacterium avium intracellular complex, which try to cause infection. It's a common cause of the infection, bacterial infection among your AIDS patient. Okay, blood, you could also perform the blood culture for identification of your extrapulmonary spread of your mycobacterium. Okay, so also for your abium intracellular complex. Okay, so you can have your Bactec system, but also have your isolator lysis and suffragation system, which identifies or process your blood culture. Then you could also have your tissue fluids, like for example, or body fluids like your CSF, if that one already go with your meninges. But also have here your serous fluids or specimen, like your pleural, peritoneal, or pericardial. Again, that's only good here for those na infection which has already spread beyond your pulmonary tree. Okay, then we have also here some of the chemicals that's being used okay, for preparation of our sputum sample here for the examination. First one, we have your NALC or your N-acetyl L-cysteine or your di uh, DTT or your di thiotritol. So 
So to answer if you as your mucolytic agent as your digestant to digest your highly mucoid na sputum in order for you then to properly easily recover here the bacteria. Another one you could also add here 2 to 4 percent NaOH. Okay, they serve here both as the contaminating agent to prevent the contamination with other bacteria that will kill the other bacteria, uh, leaving only your mycobacteria. And also serve here as our uh, digestant. Then benzalkonium chloride or your cefiran act here as the contaminating agent. Your trisodium phosphate serve here as our mucolytic agent. Oxalic acid is called to be added for that to prevent here the contamination with your pseudomonas infection. It will kill your pseudomonas if that one is being contaminating your specimen. So we have here the identification of your mycobacteria through your acid fast staining reaction. So it's acid fast staining reaction based on the uh, ability of your mycobacteria because of its thick mycolic acid to resist your acid decolorizer with the use of your acid alcohol. So we have here Sil Nielsen. This is your uh, hot method with a heating process. And we have also here the Kinion, which is your cold method without heating process. Both of this procedure uses here the primary stain in the form of your basic fusine, the colorizer in the form of your acid alcohol, and the counter stain in the form of your alkaline methylene blue. So, pag nag-add tayo ng primary stain, it will allow the uptake of your uh, different cell, even your non-mycobacteria. Non but upon addition of your decolorizer, only your mycobacteria will not be decolorized because of thick mycolic acid. And therefore, when you try to add your counter stain, it will not able to take it up. And therefore, able to retain the color of the primary stain, making this one as red in color. Whereas others, other bacteria natin, since na decolorize sila, upon addition of your counter stain, methylene blue, they will going to take it up. And therefore, magiging blue ang color ng ating non-mycobacteria. The sensitive method also here, much sensitive for the acid fast staining reaction, is your fluorescent dye with your oramine saccharodamine. That one would appear your bacteria here to be bright yellow or yellow, bright yellow, yellow orange na bacteria. Okay, this one would be able to identify this one at 250 to 400 X magnification and therefore it will in, allow you then to examine only fewer na films lang. Okay, in order for you to ascertain the entire area. Okay, pag nag uh, smear preparation tayo or nag um, evaluation of your smear for the acid fasting reaction, lahat ng area ng smear mo dapat ina-identify mo kung mayroon ka makikita ang acid fast bacilli or wala. Or just like this one ng procedure. Pero ito kasi, so this would allow you to examine 250x, 400x. So madami ka makikita ang area, so fewer area lang. I mean, madaming area na sa sakop niya. And therefore, para maubos lahat ng area, sa so konti lang examine natin. And making this one more sensitive, compare with your acid fast staining reaction with your silnilsen or your kinion. Then we have also here the culture media for isolation of or for growing your mycobacteria. So you could have here again, you try to inoculate that one with culture media, incubator temperature here 35 degrees Celsius in the dark with uh, 5 to 10% carbon dioxide requirement that increase humidity. Okay, and usually they're able to grow to 2 to 6 weeks. Okay, and uh, 2 to 6 weeks. Okay, pag mga fast growing natin, that's 2 to 3, about 2 to 3 days. Pag yung mga slowly growing natin, 2 to 6 weeks, your genovense is 6 to 8 weeks. And your mycobacterium lepre, on the other hand, could not be grown in culture media. Ulit, pag fast growing na mycobacteria natin, that's 2 to 3, 2 to 3 days, okay, of uh, Two to, three, two, to, two to six weeks, pag mga slowly growing, six to eight weeks for your mycobacterium genovense, and for the mycobacterium lepre, that one will not able to grow in culture media. That one is not cultivatable, not unless you try to grow that one with your animal inoculation or laboratory animals. Okay, so we classify the culture media here for isolation of your mycobacteria as either egg base, okay, agar base, could also have your liquid. The agar base includes your LJ, Lohenstein Jensen, and your Petragnani. And we have also your graph 
modification of your Lowenstein Jensen. Agar base, make use of your uh, uh, serum agar. Okay, this includes your MH, your middle brook. So MH7, H10, MH7, H11. And modified na special selective, selective na culture media, your middle brook. M7, H11, your Michison. That's being uh, supplemented here with the different antibiotics that will only allow the growth of your mycobacteria but not with other organisms. The antibiotics supplemented on that will prevent the growth of the other bacteria. Okay, this includes your antibiotics like your Ampotilsin B. Uh, we have also here your Polymixin B, Carbenicillin, and your Trimetoprim lactate. For the liquid one, ito yung mga broad culture media natin. The liquid culture media would allow a faster recovery or the growth of your mycobacteria compared with your egg base or your agar base. So for that, your M7H9 or your, call that one as, that's a, this is a broad media here. So also your Dobos twin albumin. You could also have your Bactec 12B media. All of that one would have your liquid na consistency. Not the solid one compared with your agar base or even your egg base. Okay, then we have your laboratory identification. So, first one, we have the skin test or your tuberculin skin test for identification of your exposure to your mycobacteria. So, the skin test for your tuberculosis could be in the form of your Mantox, Perkit, Perke, or even your PPD, that's your purified protein derivatives. So that is being injected to the skin of the patient, then after 40 to 72 hours, it's observed for the redness or erythema surrounding the area where you try to inject your antigen. So the redness will signify a positive result, but then again, that one will identify only exposure. It doesn't mean that you have a currently um, active the infection. So when you're positive, ka, it will just identify that you've been exposed. Then we have also here the photoreactivity. So Again, we can classify the mycobacteria as or, uh, their photoreactivity, their ability to produce hair carotenoid na pigment. Okay, so photochromogen, again, it's trying to try produce a yellow na pigment when exposed to the light. Scoto produces a yellow-orange pigment when exposed to the dark. And then photochromogen, on the other hand, that one do not produce a pigment, even if that one is exposed to the dark or even in the lights. Now we go to your biochemical reactions. The first one, we have the niacin production or vitamin B3. Your free niacin is being converted to your um, niacin ribonucleotide if your bacteria would have the ability or possess an enzyme that will convert that one to your free niacin to your niacin ribonucleotide. If that one produces that particular enzyme, converting that one to your nicotinamide or niacin ribonucleotide, you add here the indicator in the form of your cyanogen bromide. Positive result will be the yellow. Positive result includes your mycobacterium tuberculosis, your mycobacterium semi, and your chelony. Bovis will not give a positive result for this. That will differentiate your MTP, mycobacterium tuberculosis, with your bovis, which also belongs to your mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. Okay, the next one, we have here your nitrate reduction. So this would identify the ability of your bacteria to reduce your nitrate to your nitrite. If that one would have the enzyme nitrate reductase, then you add your sulfonylic acid. It will have your red na color reaction as positive result. So nitrate reduction will identify your mycobacterium tuberculosis. And we have also here your Kansas CI, Shulgai, and Fortuitum. Your bovis also will have a negative result in your nitrate reduction. Next, we have your catalase test with the identification of your bubble formation. So, your catalase try to hydrolyze your substrate hydrogen peroxide. Okay, with your oxygen and water. And that would result here to the bubble formation. Ang bubble formation niya is measured by the height of the bubble formation in your tube. So less than 45 mm in height identifies your M tuberculosis, your M Kansas CI, Shulgai, and Fortuitum. Less than, ay more than 45 mm sobrang taas ng kanyang bubble formation will identify your NTM, 
your non-tuberculosis mycobacteria other than this mentioned. Then we have also here the heat stability with your catalase, subjecting it at 168 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. So in the case of your mycobacterium tuberculosis, pag in natin at 68 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes, na destroy ang kanyang catalase activity. So after heating, it will already give a negative na result for your mycobacterium tuberculosis, bovis, gastri, and your hemophilium. Then we have your hydrolysis with your twin 80 identification of the enzyme lipase. So if your bacteria, mycobacteria contains the enzyme lipase, it can hydrolyze here your lipid in the form of your twin AT, converting that one to your oleic acid and polyox polyethylated polyoxyethylated sorbitol or poly polyoxyethylated alcohol. Okay, so identification positive reaction will be adding here the neutral red, so red and positive Result natin. So, this will identify, okay, after five days, mag-grow, mag-produce sila ng lipase sa CI Gordonay. In the case of your mycobacterium tuberculosis, nag-produce ng lipase, okay, after 10 days. All the rest, so negative na sila with your lipase. Okay, then we have your other biochemical reactions. So, we have your potassium telluride test. So that would identify the ability of your organism to convert your colorless potassium telluride to your metallic potassium tellurium. So positive result for that would have your metallic blackening of your colony. Okay, as to try to hydrolyze your potassium telluride. Positive result for that would be your rapid growers, your MTB, mycobacterium tuberculosis, will give a negative result for your potassium telluride. Then we have your aryl sulfatase for identification of the enzyme aryl sulfatase. So your substrate for that is tripotassium uh, phenylthalene. Okay, tripotassium phenylthalene, converting that one to your phenylthalene plus your sodium bicarbonate. Okay, positive result would have your red na color. So after three days, it will give positive result for your partitum chelonae, which are your rapid grower. Okay, after 14 days, it will give a positive result for your marinum and your shulgai. Okay, and uh, your MTB will give a negative result. Then we have your growth inhibition with your thiopine 2 carboxylic acid hydrazide. So again, your MTB will not be able to grow in the presence of this one because your T2H try to inhibit the growth of your mycobacterium tuberculosis. Whereas this one, thio, thiopine to carboxylic acid hydroxide will not inhibit the growth of your embovis. And therefore, embovis will grow in the, in the culture media containing this thiopine to carboxylic acid hydroxide. Okay, then we have also here your salt tolerance test with a 5% sodium chloride. So, ang mag-grow lang would be your triviale. So, I mean to say in the presence of that, uh, 5% sodium chloride, the trivial here will not be inhibited. Iron uptake would identify the ability of your organism here to uptake your iron, uh, preferic ammonium citrate, converting that one to your iron oxide, producing your rusty brown color ng, and product reactions. Positive result would be your 42 and your negative would be your chelony. Remember that your 42 abscessus and your M chelony belongs to your rapid grower. For them to be uh, differentiated, then you can perform your iron uptake na test. Urease test will identify the enzyme urease that will convert your substrate urea to your carbon dioxide and ammonia. Positive results, red. But that will identify your scrofulation, bovis, and your gastri, and or tweetum. Negative result, we have your coordinate, your avium, and tracellular complex. Then we have your growth in your MAC, Makonki Agar. So it will only allow the growth of your 40 ton chelonate complex, which are your rapid na grower. And we have also here pyrocinamidase, is the enzyme uh, that is, uh, would differentiate your mycobacterium tuberculosis and our bobbies. So our substrate for that is pyrocinamide. If your bacteria contains the enzyme pyrocinamidase, it will be converted to your pyrocinoic acid. Okay, a positive result natin will be red. 
Again, this enzyme is only present in your mycobacterium tuberculosis but not in your mycobacterium bovis. Okay, for we have the summary of your biochemical reactions. It's kindly refer na lang sa PowerPoint. Nakatabulate siya. Okay, anyway, parang summary lang din naman siya. Then we have also here the treatment. So, I think you're familiar with that one. So, we have your TB, TB dots or directly observed treatment short-term course strategy. So, this one will try to ensure the compliance of our patient with the entire treatment. So, dapat continuous ang treatment ng patient natin. So, the primary health worker will eventually ensure, make sure and check if the patient will be able to comply with that. Kasi pag hindi, ulitin niya entire cycle of the treatment. Okay, then we have here the drug of choice for the tuberculosis, mycoplasma tuberculosis. So, we could have here pampicine, isoniazid, okay, pyranizamide, and ethambutol. For your leprosy, you can give dapsone, clofazimine, and trifampine. Okay, so that's all with our mycobacteria. Okay, thank you.